Okay, so last week was CVPR, which is like the main AI conference for vision related kind of stuff. And Microsoft obviously had a number of papers there. One of the papers that they got into the conference was this paper called Florence 2, Advancing a Unified Representation for a Variety of Vision Tasks. Now, this paper actually came out late last year, but one of the big things that happened last week was they actually released both the model and a data set, which really advances this whole sort of area of small vision models that we've been seeing recently with things like Polygemma and Phi 3 Vision, etc. Now, when I say small, these models are getting even way smaller than they were previously. So the two Florence models, one is around 200 plus million parameters, and the other one is 700 plus million parameters. So this is million, not billion. So most of the models that we looked at before was 2 billion to maybe 3, 4 billion size. So these are tiny compared to even those models, which were small. Now, one of the, the sort of key things that sets this apart is that they've really gone down the route of making better data as well as making a better model. So with a lot of the vision data out there, they have labels, but in different kinds. So that could be object detection where you're drawing bounding boxes around it. It could be segmentation. And then you've got like other data sets that are doing things like captioning, and then even more data sets still that are doing things like visual question answering, et cetera. What the team at Microsoft have done, which is really cool, is that they've taken 126 million images that are out there and they've made 5.4 billion labels for this. So what they've done is they've taken other vision models that were really good at perhaps one kind of thing, like making bounding boxes or doing segmentation, like the SAM model, the segment anything model from Facebook. They've taken a lot of these things and they've made labels for each of the images. And then they've basically trained the model to not only predict one of these things for each image, but to predict over 10 different tasks for this. So this is everything from captioning to segmentation, to bounding boxes, to OCR, to OCR with regions. We'll have a look at some of the things this can do. Architecture wise, looking at the diagram, there's not a huge amount that's new here, right? Again, they're going for sort of an image encoder model, which I talked about a lot in the Pali Gemma video that I made and also referred to that in the Fire Vision video that I made there as well. So you basically get a representation coming out of this image encoder. You're then basically putting in different prompts, stuff like that. It then goes through a whole transformer and generates text out. Now that text can be things like a caption. It can be a just straight up bounding box with a class that it can tell you about. It can be a bounding box with a sort of description of that. It can be just a very simple description, or it can even be a segmentation map that you get out of here. So there are a lot of these different tasks that they've done. And if we look at the paper, they show some examples of these. So one of the things that you can do is get image captioning at different levels of just a simple level right through to a detailed level. And so these are some of the examples from the paper of doing image captioning with detailed levels. We can also do things like uh, visual grounding where we can get a caption out, but we can then basically have it draw bounding boxes around things in there. So you can see a nice example of this here of where you're getting it to locate phrases that are referred to in the caption uh, and you could then pass in the caption. And then it will basically find those in the image for you and draw a bounding box around them. It's also able to do things like bounding boxes, but with descriptions, as you can see here, this sort of dense region caption stuff where it's basically identifying one thing and then doing a description about just that that's in there. One of the cool things that you can do in here too, and this I imagine will be improved a lot by fine tuning with this kind of things is being able to do open vocab for object detection, where you can say, okay, in this image, they've got an example of the Chewbacca sort of thing. Now that obviously that's not going to be in a standard object detection model, but if you can say to it, okay, locate Chewbacca in the image, you can see that it can actually work out what that is. Or in this case here, we've got locate the Mercedes-Benz, the M2, 
an Audi in the image, and it's able to draw bounding boxes around each of these rather than just have a generic class of car or something like that. So this can be really useful if we're trying to do some kind of object detection model and you just don't have labels. This is a way that you can make labels and you can actually then use that to train a much faster, smaller model like a YOLO model, like doing something like a YOLO 8 or a YOLO 10 that have recently come out that are very fast at doing this stuff, but wouldn't have been trained to actually predict these very unique classes that are in here. And then you can do things like region to segmentation. So if you give it, okay, I'm interested in this particular location of where this, I think it's orange juice or milk or something like that. And I can basically put it in there and then ask it to just segment that example that you can see that it can find that really nicely. So again, this is a nice way of doing segmentation where you can basically get it to find different things through you sort of helping the model and it focusing on one particular thing that you want to segment. All right, so let's jump in and have a play with it and see what we, results we can actually get out of it ourselves. Okay, so if we jump into the Hugging Face Spaces demo here, we can see that we can pick a few different images that they've got in here and we can try them out and have a play with this. So the first one I've done is just a simple bounding box. And you can see, sure enough, it's finding the wheel, it's finding the car, it's finding the door in here. If I come up and pick some of the other tasks, though, you can see I can get a caption. So let's go for a simple caption. And it comes out, a green car parked in front of a yellow building. Yes, that's not bad. But what if we ask for a detailed caption? Notice how quick this is running, by the way, too. In this image, we can see a car on the road. The background is there's a building. At the top, there is sky. Yeah, maybe a little bit there. And let's try, like, the even more detailed caption. And you'll notice that each time we're getting more details in the caption and the captions are usually getting a bit longer. Okay. Now this one's not so great. A light blue car is parked in front of a building. There are two brown doors. Okay. So that's right. I'm not sure if this one is a door or a window and the car has large black tires on it. I wouldn't call them large, but okay. There's certainly tires. All right. So what we can do now is we can do things like, you know, getting captions with the bounding boxes. You see, now we've got wheel, but we've now got a turquoise Volkswagen Beetle. This is a much more detailed caption. So this is dense region captioning in there. We can do things like getting it to do uh, a segmentation. Now, this one, we really should tell it what we want to segment. So it's got the, it should just segment the car in here. What if I say something like, show me the wheels. Now we've still got the, the car in there. Let me try just getting the wheels. Okay, you can see now that we've got it doing a segmentation just on the wheels. So you would need to experiment around with how to prompt it to get it to do the thing that you want in here. Again, if we do the region to category, you can see that now it's returning wheel and it's giving it just the locations in there for that. Okay, and so the next example that they've got, let's get some OCR with regions. And you can see, sure enough, it can actually work out what things are. So we've got the OCR down the bottom, and then we've got the regions of interest boxes around them. So this is really good if you, you know, are trying to find text in certain places and are looking for stuff like that. And to give you a sort of an example of this, like probably five, six years ago, I helped build a system to basically be able to scan ID cards. And one of the big things there was that we needed different models for doing like the regions of interest of finding out where there was text. And then another model for actually going and doing the OCR on that text. So it's cool that this thing can do the whole thing in one shot as we go through this. Let's try this without their cherry pick demo. I'm curious to see like, how well does this do with something that is not a nice cherry pick demo? So there's clearly text in here. Okay. So it's found some of the text. It hasn't found all of the text in here. Now, if I wanted the model to get really good at this kind of thing, I would probably make up some training data and do a fine tuning for this. And you probably find it's going to get a lot better in this. We can see that what it got out of here seems to be pretty good. Looking at the proposed alpha codium flow. Uh, so this is a diagram from the alpha codium paper that I used in a presentation recently. So we can see that it's done a pretty decent job at this. The other thing with it being quite a small model. So let me just try. This is something where the big proprietary models really shine. This is basically a picture from Wikipedia of the, the, I think it's called the infinite staircase, the Penrose staircase. And 
If you were to ask something like Claude what this is, let's just try that out. You can see if I ask Claude this, very quickly it knows that, okay, this is the impossible staircase, the Penrose stairs. And it knows, you know, about it and can give you context and stuff like that. If we look at the much smaller model with Florence 2, it will describe what it is, but it doesn't have the sort of base knowledge that something like a big multimodal model like Claude or Gemini or GPT 4.0, et cetera, have with this kind of thing. So it tends to give you a more descriptive thing about what's going on in the image rather than actually knowing the meaning behind the image in this. All right. So you can come in here and have a play with it. If you want to try it out in code, I've basically taken the example from Hugging Face and just put it on Colab here. You can see that it's loading up the model. Very similar to a lot of the other things that we've got. You basically need a sort of image processor where you pass in the image and text and it will combine that to something that you can use. And then you pass it through the model here. And you can see that sure enough, here they've got some nice examples we can see of, okay, they're getting it to do different things like captioning, like object detection for doing these kinds of things. And you can see in this case, it's finding out the door for both of these. And you can tell it to do things like just find the doors, right? And that can be really useful for a lot of different tasks where you're basically looking at lots of different images, but you really only care about one or two different kinds of things. This is where this kind of model can come in really useful for this. We can see some examples of the grounding and, you know, the yellow building, the green car. It's been able to put those together quite nicely. And then for doing the segmentation, you've got some really nice examples of getting this now. Now you can see in this particular case, what they've done is they've passed in the coordinates for something around here and let it discover itself that, okay, that was a wheel there. Although it is interesting to see that in this case, it actually hasn't given a label of wheel for doing this. Anyway, so there's code in here to do all the different tasks, whether you're looking at doing OCR tasks, OCR with region tasks, and the various different sort of bounding boxes, captioning, segmentation in here. So have a play with that and see how that works with your own images. For me, playing with it. For a very limited time, I haven't gone into this hugely in detail, but for a very limited time, I'm finding that definitely their images are cherry picked a little bit. But one of the cool things, just to finish up on this, is that the Hugging Face team have released the details of actually doing a fine tune on this. So one of the things that they've done, chosen to do here was a fine tune for visual question answering with, I think, the same data set that they used for the Polygemma one. And they've basically shown how to set it up, to do the fine tuning, to be able to turn the model into something that you can then do just purely visual questioning with this, which makes sense. If you really want to use it in the real world, you're probably going to end up fine tuning this even more for your particular use case in there. I just saw this just before I started recording. If people are really interested, I can look at doing a version of fine tuning it for the visual questioning or for something like that in the future. But anyway, this is definitely a really interesting model. It's certainly worth checking out if you're doing any sort of vision tasks, especially if you're doing sort of repetitive vision tasks where you're getting a model to look at things and find things and count things and do those kinds of things with the tasks that you're trying to do for this. So anyway, as always, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. I try and read all the comments at least in the first you know, 48 hours or so. If you've got any questions about it, let me know in there as well. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.